What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of The Sit Down. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comment section below. Also, if you're new around here, you just haven't done it yet, or you're living under a rock and seeing this video for the first time, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button below now so you never miss another sit down video. If this video today gets to 1,000 likes, I will give one lucky commenter in the comments below a cash prize. The quicker we get to 1,000, the quicker we do the giveaway. So make sure you hit that like button. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get into another mafia topic. And over the years in the American mafia, we've heard all sorts of stories about family following family into the life, most notably brothers. We've all heard them, the Gottis, the Angelos, the Persicos. There have been a whole host of men that have followed their brothers into the life. Today, we're going to talk about one of those groups, a group from the Bonanno crime family. Now, one brother was more of an earner. The other one, more, a hot, more of a hot-headed lunatic. The story of Jerry and Joe Chili next on Sit Down Shorts. Now, before we get into this video, it must be important to say that I had very much trouble finding a f actual picture of Joe Chili. So again, there's a reason for me not showing Joe Chili. I do do my best in finding pictures of some of these individuals, but even in the obituary of Joe Chili, there was no picture included. Uh, Chili of uh, Joe did a good job of never being photographed. Uh, now, for Joe Chili, he would actually be born in 1933, one year before his brother Jerry was born in 1934. Now, the Chili's would actually be from Lower Manhattan as customary. A lot of the Bonanno crime family uh, that was made really in the 70s and 80s were from Lower Manhattan, really that Knickerbocker Village area. The Chili's father actually would pass away when they were in their teens in the 40s. So the Chili's would obviously have to act uh, on behalf of the family for their mother and for their sister. Now, Joe Chili would actually come up in the Fulton fish market. He would actually get a job in the late 50s working in the Fulton Fish Market. And that would actually become the spot where Joe Chili would make a lot of money throughout his mob career. It was said that he owned multiple businesses in the Fulton Fish Market. And that's also where he would meet gangsters like Lefty Ruggiero, who we discussed, also worked out of the Fulton Fish Market. Now, in the Fulton Fish Market, Joe Chili not only did legit businesses, but he was also very involved in bookmaking and loan sharking. Not something that would make him a very rich man, but it would also put him and his brother in prison down the road. And it was said that the Chili's were also pretty close with Angelo Little Mo Presenzano, who was obviously also very close with Carmine Galanti. A lot of the players that were running out of Knickerbocker Village in the Bonanno crime fund were very close with Carmine Galanti, which in the late 70s would present a major problem for people like Presenzano and other individuals, which we'll get to in this video. Now, Joe Chili, the elder Chili brother, would actually be made in June of 1977. He would be made in a uh, ceremony that was put on by Carmine Galanti, Stevie Beef Canone, and other members of the hierarchy of the Bonanno crime family. Now, for Joe Chili, he would be made into a very star-studded event that would include the likes of being made also of Anthony Spiro and big Joey Messino. They were alongside Chili to be made that night. Now, Messino, in the testimony of his flipping in the 2000s, would say that that night in that Queen's bar, it was actually packed in the bar that night. And they actually acted very secretly in the back of the bar, and they made it look like a birthday party. Messina would also say that due to the conditions that night, there was no gun on the table or, or anything like that. It was a fairly nondescript ceremony, uh, but Joe Chili was the first one made out of the Chili group. It wouldn't be long, though, until Brother Jerry would be made. Now, it wouldn't be easy for Jerry Chili to become a made member 
uh, in the Bonanno crime family. The one problem that Gerard Chili had was he was a bit of a hothead and had a major temper. And we'll get into his temper with Joe Watts in a second. But before the making ceremony of Jerry Chili, it was actually talked about that he would be uh, banished from the family after he got into an argument uh, with a longtime Bonanno capo, Gaetano Tony Lisi. Now, speaking on behalf of uh, Jerry Chili was his friend, little Mo Presenzano, who ultimately uh, got him through. And he would ultimately be made in August of 1977. Also being made in that ceremony with Jerry Chili was Bonanno member Peter Monteleone and longtime Bonanno family member Vincent Asaro. Now, subsequently, after both brother Ch brothers Chili were made, they were placed allegedly into the crew of Sonny Red and Delicato. Now, there is some possibilities that these guys moved around a lot, and I'm going to get into the fact that Jerry Chili would move around a lot uh, after uh, some of the uh, things that will go on in the Bonanno crime family. But I want to get to first the reason that Jerry Chili would have to leave and be involved and placed into another crew. Uh, in the late 70s, Jerry Chili, who was said to be a coke abuser, an alcoholic, uh, was in a bar in Staten Island um, at one point in that uh, late 1970s time. At that point, Joe Watts would come into the same bar. As we know, Joe Watts, uh, very involved in Staten Island as well. And Joe Watts was, as we know, an associate in the Gambino crime family who had the same uh, respect as a made man. Watts couldn't be made because he wasn't fully Italian, but Watts was very uh, connected very involved. I actually did a video that can be seen up here on Joe Watts. I highly recommend checking that out. He was very powerful. But Joe Watts and Jerry Chili get into an argument. From what I understand, a witness that was at the bar said Chili verbally assaulted uh, Joe Watts. Now, there was no physical altercation, but Joe Watts, uh, his pride was hurt a little bit. So Joe Watts goes to his uh, superior, Paul Castellano, who in turn uh, is the boss of the family at this point. He basically tells uh, Neil Della Croce, one of his uh, emissaries, to basically handle this situation. Now, initially, the Gambino crime family wanted to kill Jerry Chili, who, again, was a made man at this point and had umbrage over Joe Watts, who was an associate. Now, this goes to show how powerful Joe Watts was at the time. Basically, Neil Della Croce would say uh, that they wanted to kill uh, Sonny Red's guy. Now, Sonny Red and Delicato would step up and basically say, look, uh, we're not killing uh, Jerry Chili, who's a made man over this. Your guy's an associate. We're not doing it. Uh, at that point, Neil De La Croce would respond, quote, then kill the fucking guy. Uh, now, ultimately, they, or not kill the fucking guy, but shell the fucking guy. Uh, they would not uh, kill him. They would shelve him. That's exactly what happened. Jerry Chili was, for a period of time, shelved and basically put into another crew. Uh, and made to go up to the Bronx, and he was placed into the crew of longtime Bonanno heavyweight Vito DiFilippo, who in turn was uh, close at one point with Joe Bonanno. So Jerry Chili's big mouth got him in trouble, and this was not the first time that Jerry Chili's behavior got him into hot water with members of the Bonanno crime family or another member of the Bonanno crime family. The truth was, though, Jerry Chili was a powerful guy. He was a good earner, him and his brother, uh, and they were – very important to the family. And sometimes you're able to do certain things uh, and nothing will happen. Again, Gambino's wanted to kill him, uh, but Jerry Chili was able to move on to the Bronx. At one point in discussing members of the Gambino crime family, Jerry Chili would respond, quote, fuck those guys in Queens. Chili, as I said, would go up to the Bronx and would be in the DiFilippo crew, who at the time had a pretty powerful crew. Vito DiFilippo, uh, had really uh, been involved with the Bonanno crime family since the 50s when he came over from Sicily. Alongside Chile and his crew was his son, Patrick Patty from the Bronx Di Filippo, and Willie, Willie Glasses, Riviello. Now, in 1979, as we know, Carmen Galanti would be killed at Joe and Mary's in Bushwick in Brooklyn. This would set up uh, a movement for members of the Bonanno crime family. Vito Di Filippo would ultimately be demoted alongside other members of the family that were capas, including Nikki Glasses, Marangello, among others. Vito DiFilippo's crew uh, would be disbanded. Now, for 
Jerry Chili, he would be placed into the crew, allegedly, of Armand Palestrino. Palestrino had been around for a long time as well. He goes back to uh, really the 30s of the Bonanno crime family. He'd been around a long time. Jerry Chili, uh, though, would ultimately, in the early 80s, have to face some personal tragedy. Uh, in 1984, Gerard Chili's son, Joe Chili, uh, would be found dead in a parking lot at 299 Pearl Street in lower Manhattan. Now, interestingly enough, the son of Jerry Chili, uh, Joe, was actually found dead alongside the stepson of lefty Ruggiero, Thomas Sabano. Now, Chili, uh, Chili's son was involved in the drug trade and may have, for a number of reasons, been marked dead. At one point, it was actually said by a confidential informant that uh, Jerry Chili's son was going off cold cock, killing people that he wasn't supposed to kill. Now, again, we don't exactly know why Jerry Chili's son was killed, but Jerry Chili was absolutely furious, and he wanted retribution. At one point, according to uh, a confidential informant, the nephew of Joe Chili, or sorry, the nephew of Jerry Chili, little Joe Chili, would say that Jerry Chili intended to not only kill the alleged gunman of his son, Anthony O'Connor, but also his father. According to the informant, Jerry Chili, quote, wanted to take off everybody in his desire to execute not only O'Connor, but another individual that was allegedly involved in the assassination, a guy called Anthony the Elf Bonaventura. Now, by this point, Joe Chili uh, and Jerry Chili were making a lot of money. And Jerry Chili had, by this point, uh, moved uh, to uh, Hollywood, Florida. He was doing a lot of business uh, down in Hollywood. He was making money through not only uh, loan sharking, credit card fraud, but also it was said that uh, Jerry Chili loved uh, to steal. Uh, that was something he was very big on. Uh, Jerry Chili was doing a lot of work down in Florida, but he would also uh, report back a lot to Staten Island and to New York where he had a home as well. By this point as well, he would actually be in and out of prison for charges that he would catch. At one point during his time in prison, Jerry Chili would meet an individual called Gus Faraci. Now, Faraci was a, a hood from Staten Island that was not only connected to the Colombo crime families, but other families as well. In prison, Gus Faraci would meet Jerry Chili and Jerry Chili would act basically as a quasi father for Gus Faraci. Faraci was a, a, a lunatic as well, and Faraci uh, kind of went onto the wing of Chili. Uh, two lunatics that really shouldn't have uh, ever been connected to each other because they were both nuts. Uh, Faraci was uh, moving around in the weed business, and upon uh, getting out of prison in the late 80s, Gus Faraci began moving large amounts of cocaine in the New York area. Now, the DEA was starting to close in on the New York underworld. And at one point, Farachi was selling drugs to DEA agent Everett Hatcher. I guess at one point, Farachi finds out that Everett Hatcher is a DEA agent. And in February of 1989, Gus Farachi would kill DEA agent Gus or uh, uh, Everett Hatcher. Uh, Everett Hatcher was a, a longtime member of the DEA and had been obviously undercover at one point. Gus Faraci would go on the run and would be a marked man. Now, this was a major problem for not only the Bonanno crime family, but most families in the mafia. At one point, Gus Faraci would be uh, allegedly hooking up and uh, hanging out with Jerry Chili's daughter. And at one point, Faraci would hide out in her home. Now, during this point for the Chili family, they would have to face the FBI. Jerry Chili, alongside his brother, Joe Chili, would be arrested in the summer of 1989. In November of 1989, Gus Faraci's bullet-riddled body would be found in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Now, it has never been proven that Jerry Chili was involved or ordered the killing of Gus Faraci. We would obviously say it's likely that the Bonanno crime family alongside Jerry Chili knew that Faraci had to go. It was street justice. He killed the cop. 
he had to go. And it was really only a matter of time. Faraci would have been found eventually, and either would have did life in prison. Um, but it, it can be choreographed that Chile likely gave up his adopted son, if you will, of Faraci. As I said, Chile and his brother would obviously have to face their own problems. In 1989, Jerry Chile, alongside Joe Chile, would be indicted in a multi count racketeering trial uh, that would include bookmaking and loan sharking. Now, Jerry Chile would also uh, be hit with the charges of conspiracy to kill Anthony O'Connor and Tony the Elf Bonaventura. Now, it has to be stated that Tony the Elf Bonaventura, the man that Chile believed was involved in killing his son, actually went missing. It was never seen again, as far as I know. Now, Chile and his brother uh, would beat the rap on some charges. Jerry Chile would beat the rap on conspiracy to commit murder uh, and would, though, have to face prison time, he and his brother. Uh, Jerry Chile would be given nine years in that bookmaking racketeering case. His brother, Joe, would get 15 years. Now, for Jerry Chile, this would set up a long line of prison time uh, for the longtime Bonanno hothead. Uh, by this point, though, he had gotten involved with the lucrative world of credit card fraud. He was making a lot of money really through fraud and stealing credit cards. At one point, Jerry Chili would very much talk to his associates uh, about um, really never paying for anything. Um, he would tell associates basically, just use a credit card. Uh, and an associate would respond that he didn't have a credit card. Um, and Jerry would basically give him stolen ones and just say, use these. He was also indicted at one point in prison uh, for a credit card scam that he allegedly pulled off from his prison cell. Again, this would set up a long line of uh, doing life on the installment plan for Jerry Chili. Now, for Jerry Chili, his brother, Joseph Chili, uh, by the late 90s, would get out of prison. And it was said that he retired by that point. He was in his 70s. He had a lot of money and retired on Staten Island. Joe Chili would die in 2008. Jerry Chili, though, would live for another about decade in and out of prison. As I said, he would do life in and out between the late 90s into the early 2000s. And at one point, he was actually indicted in 2006 for more racketeering charges in and out of Florida. Now, in 2012, he would be out on supervision, hanging out in his a retirement pad in Hollywood, Florida. Now, during that time, he was being overseen by a federal agent that ran his uh, parole uh, supervision out of Florida. In 2012, Joe or Jerry Chili wanted to go back to New York for the holidays. He would get approval uh, from the uh, you know supervisor that he had. The problem for Jerry Chili was he just never left the life. Uh, he would be observed days later. Uh, at the Delta pickup at one of the New York airports being picked up by longtime Bonanno crime family member, Anthony Fat Tony Ribito, alongside others. He would also be seen in the company of Thomas Tommy D. D. Fior and Ernest Ernie Aiello. Now, subsequently, uh, Jerry Chili uh, would be picked up uh, for his involvement in being seen with different Bonanno crime family members. Now, Gerard Chili would say that all four encounters, including a dinner, were, quote, chance encounters and that uh, he just happened to stumble upon uh, Tommy DeFiore and fat Tony Rubito uh, and other members of the Bonanno crime family. He just said they happened to uh, meet each other. Uh, and this would actually set up a pretty funny, um, uh, you know, talk between Judge Sterling Johnson and Jerry Chili. At one point, Sterling Johnson would say to Chili, quote, you're too old to be doing this, Mr. Chili. This is a young man's game. You should stay in Florida. At one point, Chili would respond as he leaned on a cane due to health problems saying, quote, I know your honor. That's what I'm going to do. Jerry Chili would uh, remain alive for several more years in and out of prison. Again, by this point, Gerard Chili was overweight. He had health problems and he needed a cane to help himself walk. He would eventually develop throat cancer 
and Jerry Chili would die in 2016 at the age of 82. He was survived by his wife and his daughter. Remember, his son had been killed way back in 1984. Now, it is important to understand that during the time when his son was killed, he would actually have the gunman shot at a bar called Dottie's on the Upper West Side. That gunman would those survive. But as I said earlier, the government was never actually proved uh, that Jerry Chili ordered that hit. They tried to bring him to justice in it, but he never was ultimately brought to justice. Again, really from the late 80s until his death in 2016, Jerry Chili would remain in and out of prison. One thing can be said about the Chili's. They made a lot of money, uh, and most notably, Joe made most of the money. He was the earner in the family. Jerry was more of the hothead lunatic uh, that killed people and was involved with undesirables really throughout his life. He had a major problem with alcohol as well. It was also said that Jerry Chili was a lot of the time on the Jersey Shore uh, and would cause problems down the shore in Seaside and other uh, areas. Uh, he was just a bit of a hothead. Now, I do want to bring up a current day individual, the nephew of Jerry Chili and son of Joe Chili. Joe Chili III has been in and out of prison as well. The federal government would allege that he is a made man in the Bonanno crime family as well. And he could be seen here uh, in a, a perp walk that he made into the federal court in New York. He'd be seen in croc sandals. Uh, and a Reebok tracksuit. Now, by this point, and I urge you, there is a video of this walk, and it is actually quite funny. Uh, Chili would talk to the camera at one point. Now, Chili would maintain that he was really just a produce delivery service owner and that he basically supplied pizzerias and other restaurants with tomato sauce, olive oil, and other Italian provisions, and that he was not a gangster. Uh, the judge in the case would, would basically tell him the same thing that he would tell uh, members of his uh, family uh, before. At one point, the judge would basically tell him, look, you can't continue to engage uh, in business with um, people that are mobsters uh, and that he would be slapped on the wrist. Uh, it is alleged that uh, Joe Chili III is a soldier in the Bonanno crime family. At one point, was picked possibly to be a cop of regime. Now, I do not know the current state of Joseph Chili III's uh, encounters with the mafia. I will say this though, uh, he is over 400 pounds and has major health problems. He could barely walk into court. It's probably helpful, Joe Chili the third, if you probably just uh, head out into retirement. But look, the Chili's, this is what they did. They are stone cold gangsters. This is who they are and what they'll always be. When we look back on Jerry and Joe Chili, um, they are continued. These people that are in the mafia that just keep the wheels of these families going through earning, leg breaking, uh, and really just doing what they do. They are gangsters. Uh, and Jerry Chili can be really talked about as uh, one person would say a one man crime wave. That's really what he was. And he would spend most of it in prison. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss another sit down video.